Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We've been talking to Dr. Joseph Cardello about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention, How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Free Up Headspace, Do More, and Be More at Work. And a lot of the stuff that we just talked about in the previous segment, we were talking about um, um, change blindness, inattention, um, blindness, the miser brain, priming, these are all things that our brain does in, 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 in hopes of doing the thing in our highest and best interest, but sometimes there are shortcuts that um, aren't in our highest and best interest, and it's to be aware and reflecting on those kinds of things. So at least we know that our brain is predisposed to act these days, and we can reconsider how we've acted. Now, one of the things that you mentioned in that segment is you talk about focusing from broad to narrow and, and back again. And so I want to talk a little bit about what that means and, um, and how, why it's important to be able to, you know, narrowly focus and then broadly and openly focus. Yeah, I think that, <clears throat> well, the, the, two, the two things you want to keep in mind is that when you, when you, when you open your focus, you're able to catch more detail and and see more it's kind of like let's say that we're at a concert and you're you're watching the whole orchestra play and so that's your wide lens you're you're seeing the whole stage everything at once and then let's say that that you're a violinist and so you're really curious about what the lead violinist might be doing in that in that particular piece that you're hearing and you, you you put on binoculars and you zero right in on the on the violinist and and you're able to with your ears phase out mm. a lot of the rest of the orchestra and 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 bring up the volume even though it's nothing's changing on stage mm -hmm. in your mind you're able to bring up the volume on just the violinist and hear her contribution to the whole thing and mm -hmm. and with the binoculars you can zero in on 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 what she's actually playing on the violin and her finger movements and so on her bowing and mm -hmm. even zero in on make it even narrower and zero in on some of the finer movements mm. maybe maybe a trill she does or maybe maybe a particular uh movement of the bow that that, that you catch because you're looking for finer and finer detail mm. that's your narrow focus and at any given moment you can open that back up again with both in mind so you can open up to the wider focus and you can now see the full orchestra and still hear the contribution of the violin to the whole thing. Mm. And so what you've, what you've been able to do is to, is to increase um, your, your appreciation, not only of the violinist, but of the whole orchestra. And I use that kind of as a metaphor for you know, any, any given moment during the day, we mm. can do that. Okay, so um, this is a, and I know that you're probably a meditator. Um, so in um, the practice that I do, um, Mahamudra um, meditations, it's about taking this expansive view. So you're actually, it's, you're trying to sim simultaneously recognize that there's infinite space, infinite time, you're, there's changeless, timeless awareness, and it's always there super broad like way broad no boundaries between cj and hawaii you know even though i'm in seattle right i mean there's just there's really no boundaries because space is infinite time is infinite um so it's taking this wide lens which i've been trying to hold simultaneously as i'm doing something like an email which is very concentrated I'm yeah. in this space concentrated in an email, but then there's just like bigger thing happening around me. And I've been for, I'd say for the last six months to a year, trying to like be able to hold both simultaneously, but having a hard time doing it because I understand the merits of holding it because you're, you're an awareness from the spiritual sense of like the greatest awareness of everything. Um, and while at your same time concentrating. So as a meditator, what I'm, I'm assuming that this is maybe something that you've looked at before and what advice you have from someone who wants to look both broadly and then narrowly simultaneously. Well, I, I think that, 
I, first of all, I, I, I think that you can do this. I think that we mm -hmm. can all do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have to train that. I, I believe we have to train that. I, I believe we have the ability to do just that. Um, and I believe that with the more practice that we have, the better that we can get at, mm -hmm. at something like that. Um, I think that for me, um, I use a formula of open, open my lens wide open for whatever, whether it's a meditation or not, to open my lens wide open, um, see the sea of detail that's that's coming at me mm -hmm. and then identify the piece or pieces that I want to zero in on and focus so that I have the open lens, then the narrow lens, and then I can execute the thought, the, the feeling, the emotion, whatever it is that I'm attempting to do, even bring them together. And then I have to, before I can go on to the next step, which might be to do it again, I have to kind of rinse it off. So I use the mm. expression rinse. So I have a wide lens, a narrow lens, an execution, and then a rinsing. And, and what does the rinsing off do again? The rinsing off clears my energy and, and gives me the ability to, to do this again. Ah, so it recharges your energy so that you're not kind of diluting your energy when you're focusing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, one of the practices uh, that I do is, to, and I'm sure that you do too, is to try to try to, to hold like whatever your objective is longer uh, each time. Um, and so I, I, you know, I think that that, that helps as well. Yeah. I have a hard time doing that off the mat on the mat. I'm relatively okay. I could get better, but maybe it's what I'm hearing from you is perhaps needing to do that very well on, on the mat, you know, on the meditation cushion and then bringing that to out, outside of out in the outside world. I don't well, know. One of the, one of the things, one of the things that, that uh, I tried to bring to the table um, in this book uh, and also in other books is a, uh, is a, uh, a, a slightly different understanding of what balance might be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I find that for anything, for me, for anything meditative, anything mindful, anything where awareness or attention, um, reflection or visualization, any of these uh, mind wares, uh, are involved, I find that if I can balance my energy first, mm, 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 all mm -hmm. those things, all those things uh, become sharper. Mm. Uh, and so what I tried to do is I tried to look at this idea of balance as an energy, actual energy. Mm. Uh, most of what I talk about in the book is, is energy based um, and energy and, and, and how that affects our psychology, actually. Mm. Um, but but my ener energetic definition of balance is this, that it's that space right between calm and alert. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. for example, take any task that you might do on any given day of the week. Mm -hmm. If I were any more mellow, I wouldn't be able to do it. Right. If I were any more jazzed up, if I were any more excited, I couldn't do it either. Mm. So I can't be too alert and I can't be too mellow or it's mm -hmm. not going to happen mm -hmm. in a balanced way. When I'm imbalanced is the beginning of stress in either mm -hmm. direction. In either direction, most people associate stress, you know, with 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 an exuberance of energy, but it can happen the other way too. like I'm stressed because I don't have the energy to do this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the stress comes from both directions. When you're in that space between calm and alert per situation, depends what the situation is, um, you're balanced. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I recommend for people to do um, 
and, and this is slightly different than the visualizations and so on, although it plays in, is to find themselves, you know, one of the things I love most is sound, is using natural sound and or music. And mm -hmm. so I think that if people can find a piece of sound or music that, that brings their energy up, let's just mm -hmm. talk about it, brings their energy up, then, then th that's a valuable thing because you can use it to help balance you when your energy isn't strong oh. enough. Mm. You could just put it, put it on your cell phone, put it on your iPod, your computer or whatever. And you've got this piece of sound. It could be a waterfall or it could be uh, an instrumental piece, or it could be a lyrical piece with, you know, with, with upbeat kind of music. That's got the lyrics that'll bring you, that'll bring you up and elate mm. you in the mm -hmm. right situation. And then also have have your favorite piece that will lower your energy. Mm -hmm. So you've got, in, in a way, you've got two kinds of medicine here. One right. kind of medicine to bring you down and one kind of medicine to bring you up. And depending mm -hmm. on where you're at for the particular task, you can use sound to do that. And the same thing with an image. So mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to put, if you don't do anything else that we've been talking about, find a piece of sound and find an image that you can correspond with it and put mm -hmm. it on your iPhone so that you've got them both. Right. And, and, and then depending on the situation you're in, ask yourself, what kind of energy do I need? Mm. And then you can bring yourself up or you can bring yourself down. You can find that point of balance. Mm. And then I think, all those other things from that point of balance, all these other things that we've talked about um, will, um, will, will be sharper. Mm, okay, I love it. Um, th really, really practical, very good information. We've been talking with Dr. Joseph Cardello about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention, How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Free Up Headspace, Do More and Be More at Work. Thank you so much.